Previously on Unpacked. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. And he beat me up. He broke a glass on my head. I had to go into hiding for four years. Did you at any point get a protection order against him? He had sent hitmen on my mother, so my mother was murdered. We continue our conversation with Lakim Tembu, who shares more about how she survived living with a murderer. Let's unpack. So after the hospital incident, you were like, I can't anymore. Mm. Your mom's car was burnt, right? Yes, what was the night. next big event that happened the after that? The next big event that happened after that was two months later when um, Uma was murdered. How, how was she murdered? Okay, so she was butchered to death. And it was... It was staged. That that whole thing was staged. It, it was made to seem like... So my mother was a, a school principal. Mm. It was made to seem like um, it had to do with a post or, you know, those, like, fighting over posts. Mm. That Those periods when my principal were fighting over my post. But she had been a principal for a while. Mm. So it can't pop up from nowhere. Mm. And another thing, another thing. So before she was murdered, like a week, less than a week before she was murdered, um, her walls, her office walls outside were spray painted that she must resign or else. And like a picture of a gun, um, like spray painted gun with bullets. And I know this guy's handwriting. Mm. But I was like, no, I'll take this with a pinch of salt. I know it's him. And sure enough, later it was confirmed and he was bothering my family. Which it is him that went and spray painted that. And the cops didn't want to look into it. Why? Mm. So did, did you take that warning seriously? I did. did. Did your mom take it seriously at the time? She did. She did, which was very strange. Because if you are saying um, this is about a post... Why don't you wait for the person to 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 resign or to get away from like wait for them to serve notice or something? Yeah. If that is the reason why this happened, it can't be that that is that you are going to say resign and then less than a week resign. later. Yeah, you don't wait for them to resign. Literally a few days later, they are murdered. It shows that there's foul play going on. Was the mom alone when she was murdered? She was alone, yes. She, she was driving back from work. And then uh, what had happened then? Um, so we don't know what really happened, but she was... So her car was found on the side of the road and she had been butchered to death. Mm. And also, it just seems too personal. Mm. If it was a post-related thing, like, I don't know, maybe shoot. Yeah. You know, it, it was too personal. It was too personal. The, the level of violence. Mm, it yeah. was too personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your mother was murdered. Um, how did you take it at the time? <sighs> it was a lot. It was a lot because my mother and I were very, very close because um, she raised me as a single parent for like a greater part of my life before my stepdad came into the picture. I don't like calling my stepdad, but yeah, he's been amazing. So it was, I took it very hard. Go back. She passed away three weeks after my grandmother passed away. Mm. So they both raised me. So it was like losing both my mothers at the same mm. time. Cause Ubaba Mangyembeela was shown up before I was even born. Mm. So it was, I took it really hard. I fell into a deep depression. Like, mm. it was terrible. It was terrible. Did he ever say anything to you after your mom passed away? Oh, yes, of course. He was rubbing it in my face that, um, you know, the, the people that killed your mother, they should have burned her body. They, they like, he was laughing at the whole thing, mm. which is strange, which is really strange. I mean... You can be angry at me that I left you, but there are just things you don't mm. joke about like that. Mm. Mm. He was literally rubbing it in my face that your mother was killed. They 
they should have like she died like a dog. Like he was saying all sorts of things. Like he was sending me messages. There was a time where it got so crazy that I had to change my number. He literally set up a messaging campaign, like an online messaging campaign where he sent me 5,000 messages. I'm not even lying. What? 5,000. What were they saying? Basically that. Um, talking about how my mother my mother deserved to die, that she was uh, calling her names and saying that, no wonder I'm this person. He was just trying to break me even more, you know, mm. because he knew how close I was to mom. And also taking her away, he thought that I'd come back to him. So when I didn't, that, you know, that sent him, mm. that sent him flying. So um, mom's now been murdered. Um, I'm assuming the police didn't solve the case. Oh, no. Yeah. The police. Ah, the police. I, you know, I, I realize that as women, we are alone in this mm. country when it comes to these issues. If they don't ask you to go solve, solve your domestic issues, they don't take it seriously. Mm. And... I don't understand why. I really, it, it's beyond me because all the evidence and proof was there as to what mm. was happening and what I was going through. So when, because obviously I need to, if there's a murder, they start like with the immediate family, mm. right? So dad was interviewed, I was interviewed. Um, and they asked me, oh, would see, who do I think could have done this? Mm. And I said to them, I think you guys need to look into this guy. And I give them like a brief history of the fact that if we are being honest, mm. the chaos in our lives came when this guy came. Mm. Like chaos that just kept escalating mm. more and more and more. So it would be, it would be, I would recommend that you look into it. And they're like, oh, okay, actually you're making sense when I tell them the story. When I follow up, when dad and I follow up uh, about a month later, they tell us that, oh, no, but what reason would he have to, to be doing something like this? And we're like, but did you interview him? Mm. And they're like, no, we didn't, but we don't see what... How do you know him for you to conclude mm. that he, it couldn't have been him? That's when I realized... So there's not an investigate. They probably did, and they were bribed. Mm, mm, mm. Because why, how on earth do you decide that a person couldn't have been part of something when initially, I t when, when I told you about it initially, you said it makes sense. Mm. And then suddenly from nowhere, now it's, it, 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 could, it couldn't be a thing. Mm, mm. At which point did you decide that? Why did you decide that? How did you come to that conclusion? Mm. So when did you decide to go into hiding? I went into hiding after he sent me hitmen. And so, how do you know that they were sent? Because, yeah, my life, I've, my life has been a movie. So he obviously started, okay, not, it's not obvious, but he started stalking me. Um, so mom was murdered in August. And then January, he started stalking me. Um, he he would park outside, so I was <laughs> I started dating an old friend of mine, and he he went and he this guy was crazy. He went and he threatened a beggar mm. who sat who, who sat at the corner there by the street, telling him that if he saw me going into that house, um, into my boyfriend at the time's house he should call me, he should call him. So mm. he gave him a phone, gave him his number, wrote his number on a, on a slip. Mm. And this beggar, how I know this is because this beggar came to me when, when he did eventually see me. I don't know how he found me, mm. but he found me. This beggar came to me when eventually when he saw me and he was shaking and scared, saying that three men uh, came to him uh, three three men plus a guy driving, driving a so and so car, which is his car, his the make of his mm -hmm. car, described it exactly the color, everything, saying that if he saw me, um, he must let him know. And he showed me the phone that he gave him mm -hmm. and the number, the the slip in which he wrote his um, phone number, and it was his handwriting, mm -hmm. and it was his number. Mm -hmm. So whenever I would 
leave this guy's house, the boyfriend at the time. So even this guy, he attacked him and I wasn't there. So and he like threw an entire bottle of through his window, sh- screaming and shouting, telling him to get out, um, hitting the gate with something metal. Mm. I'm assuming it was a gun saying someone's going to get this because I think he thought I was there. Mm, mm. So the guy called me and he said, your person is here. And I could hear him in the background Mm. screaming and shouting. And then the beggar, later the beggar incident happened. And then I started seeing his car parked Mm. outside. Whenever I was there, I would see him. Mm. I would like literally see him. And I would call the cops because after that incident where I attacked the the guy I was seeing at the time, we opened a case. Mm. And I would call the cops and say, guys, this person is parked outside. He's stalking me now. Mm. Like he's literally just chilling here. He comes and he chills here all day. Mm. That means I can't live my life now. And the cops were like, well, he said he's away on business. I'm like, what? I'm Mm. telling you, I'm looking at him right now. Mm. And they're like, no, but he said he's not here. Mm. That's also another indication for me, Uguti. uh -uh, There was definitely foul play Mm. going on here because I can't be telling you, Uguti, I'm looking at the person right now and you are telling me he said he's not Mm. here. Mm. What do you mean, Mm. you know? So that happened from January to May when this incident care of the hitman happened. So I would always tell the cops, guys, Nangula. And they said, the cops would specifically say to me, he said he's gone away on business and he'll be back in April, after April. You see, what's meant to happen after April? Why that specific date? Why that specific date? And I just had a funny feeling. And sure enough, I think it was the 7th of May. So it was just after April Mm. where that that attempted hit um, occurred. So Mm. I was coming back from um, my boyfriend's home in Stanga at the time. (laughs) And it was um, late at night. I think it was, no, not even late, like quarter to seven-ish in the evening. And we parked the car and my car, so it was on the road and my car was maybe about five meters away. And as we parked, so we were busy arguing and I just had this funny feeling. Mm. that day, the whole day, and I, I couldn't make sense of why. And as we parked the car, I, I I hear a gunshot while we're busy arguing about me wanting to go somewhere and him saying, well, you didn't say. We were arguing about something, like, very petty. And I hear a gunshot behind us, and I'm thinking, yo, okay, what is that? I look behind us, and I see a man in black clothing and a balaclava going towards my car. And I'm thinking, okay, what's going on here? And then next thing, there's another man here now trying to open the passenger side of the door, which was a clear indication for me. So this is not a hijacking. Mm. These people are here to get me. Mm. And they had the gun pointed at me. And every time they pulled the trigger, as it was pointed at me, it would yang up mm. like it would jam. Mm, mm. And they would point it up and it would go off. They point it again, up, you know. Mm. And okay, we I told the 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 guy I was with the good dude, just move, like mm. drive. If mm. whatever happens, we'll fix the car. Just go, like mm. move away from the situation. And as we move away, um, we so he reverses, it becomes this huge dramatic thing where they they bump into us because they were in a. They came out of a white SUV. Mm. Yeah, plate. They bump into us. The car spins. It was drama. Like mm. it was drama, and then eventually they realize it's okay. I'm assuming they realize it's okay. We can't. We can't mm. get what we came here for, and they started driving off. Um, but then, as we were trying to get away, we were involved like in a head-on collusion mm. accident. It was drama. It mm. was a whole lot of drama, but. That's when the hit uh, the, the hit happened and leading to that, there was a lot of stalking and him trying to see the our patterns and mm. because it can't how how did you know that we had just arrived? And if it was a hijacking, why aren't you going to the driver's side of the car? Mm, mm, you know mm. it, it it was just all very strange. Yeah. So was that the moment you decided you need to go into hiding? That's when I said, okay. This guy yeah. means business. I need to go hide because 
being, I, I didn't care. I had reached a point where I was like, I can't live my life when my life needs to go on because mm. I was continuing with my my master's because what would, what would happen is he would start with this nonsense I had to stop mm. and then I'd go back I stop so mm. I had reached a point I was like I'm done doing this thing of starting and stopping mm. I'm just now going to find me I'm born and now he's sitting here I would literally just walk out get into the car and drive to campus mm. Mm. and I think he saw so mm. he took it a notch higher but for me it was like why wow, are you that scared of me like that that for me was a very it was a it, it, it made me realize how powerful I am mm-hmm. you send me three men to come and kill me mm-hmm. how powerful am I for you to mm-hmm. send three men to come and kill me you know for me that was like okay mm-hmm. there's definitely purpose behind all of this this is not happening how did you go into like hiding what, like were you just offline at the time So I um, so I went and I stayed with Ubab mm. and my brother and he didn't know where we, we were staying. Mm. So he knew sort of because after the incident with Uma, I begged my dad, guys, can you please just move from there because this guy knows, mm. you know, so can you just, because now he's literally going to start covering everything that has mm. to do with me. So um, they moved and then that's where they moved to. That's where I went to stay with them. So he mm. couldn't find me. Mm. But I think what annoyed him was that as much as he couldn't find me. So growing up, I had always said, and, and, and when my modeling career started, you know, taking flight, I had always said, Uzi, I want to go back to my hometown and and um, open a modeling academy mm. because I realized how that didn't just help my modeling career, but my life in general. So I teach basic life skills, you know, grooming. So it was an speaking. opportunity for you to go and almost start afresh. And do that, but yes. But do it where he doesn't know where, where you are. he doesn't know where I am. Yeah. But even then, it was very hard because he knew the area I was in. Yeah. But he didn't know where to find me. Yeah. So what annoyed him, I think, was the fact that he would see what I was doing through local magaz- um, local newspapers. Yeah. But he couldn't physically find me to kill yeah. me. And I got away after he tried to kill me. And yeah. now he can't physically find me. Which then led him to opening um, an entire... Okay. Then he's, he, he tried to smear campaign me now. Because mm. I can't find you to kill you. So, But I'm seeing that you're doing everything that you've always said mm. you are going to do. That means I haven't destroyed you properly. So I'm going to smear, smear your name now. And he opened a website saying that the agency that I co-owned was actually a non-deen grooming school. So mm. he was saying that it's not a it's not a it's not a modeling academy per se. That's a front. It's actually a brothel. Wow. And I'm here uh, grooming girls on how to be a like me. Mm. Mm. And he didn't just stop there. I would have been able to deal with that because I mean the people that know me know Mm. who I am. He didn't just stop there, just to show how hell-bent he was at destroying me. He called my, in that website, he wrote that I learned, so he was writing the website as me, like mm. almost like a personal blog. He said that he, I, I learned these skills from my agency, mm. my Durban agency. And he then went and sent them an email saying that I'm so disappointed at uh, one of your models that because the, she's saying that she learned these skills from you, from yeah. you guys, you know. Yeah. He, he then, <laughs> I'm assuming, because this is what happened after this incident, he then contacted, I'm assuming he, he contacted Sun International um, because I get it, I'm a former Miss, Miss, Teen. Miss, Miss Teen First Princess, yes, and they are like the main sponsors. I think he contacted them as well because after that incident, the YouTube uh, page of the uh, the YouTube uh, video mm. of the pageant disappeared from mm. YouTube, mm. right? Mm. And then the third thing was that he called the head office for the face cream that mm. I was the ambassador for and did the same thing. He was mm. literally trying to break me because now mm. I can't, he can't find me to to kill me. Mm. So now he must just destroy everything, you know, mm. that I'm trying to do. So 
It was a lot. It was a lot. Mm, so mm. Wow, Vlad, what's in Vule, this non programming school? And he bought page three of the Natal Witness, which is a very popular newspaper um, in, in KZN. And he posted this thing with my name on it and like in Tembo, with my picture on it, with the uh, link to the website that he's created for wow. people to go and see. He hacked into my, fa- into my Facebook account at the time and he started writing all these things like updating his statuses as me, but trying to show people and lead them to this website. It was a lot. So now, I mean, when was this person eventually caught? And how did that happen? Um, okay. So, I don't know if you remember when Karabomo Kwena was murdered. It was still, I was still in hiding at the mm-hmm. time. But I realized, you know, this is getting serious because if this happened to a woman, I think that was the, 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 the day that all of South Africa opened their eyes on how serious, mm. you know, the situation near gender-based violence is. And I thought to myself, no, this if this guy finds me, this is going to happen to me. Mm. Because he was actively, he was actively trying to find me. He hadn't stopped trying to find me. So I, I decided to go crazy on Twitter. Yeah. Decided to go crazy on Twitter. And eventually I got the attention of um, the minister of police at the time. He inboxed me. And then we started, you know, paving a way forward on how to deal with the situation. But I did say, Uguti, when I was venting on Twitter, Uguti, if this guy is not apprehended, somebody's going to die. Mm. And sure enough, seven months later, someone someone did die. He murdered a girl and burned her body. Mm. And the shock that came to me when I found that out, because I lived with this person for almost two years, Mm. So it was, for me, it was like, yeah, I know that, you know, he tried to cover this with my mother, but now here's the proof. Like, Mm. he did this. This is who I was living with, you Mm. know. I was living with an entire murderer. Mm. It, like, my, 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 my blood just sank. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. So, um... Now he was caught. Yes. Because he, he murdered caught. someone else. Yes. Was it somebody he was in a relationship with? No, it was someone he was trying to be in a relationship with. So um, he, w- he would also delve into, I found out during the relationship that he had subscribed to a number of escort um, websites. And so this girl was someone he found in one of those websites. Mm. And... Based on the story that I heard, because I've been in contact with people that were close to the girl, because I really wanted to find out what happened. Uh, Based on what I heard, he was trying to now get her into a relationship with him. Mm. So this girl apparently didn't um, sleep with with her clients, Mm. but she gave sensual massages and, and that kind of stuff. So now he wanted to sleep with her and she didn't want to do that, or she was pursuing her, but she won- he wanted more than what she was willing to give. And um, that's why he decided to end her life, because I get everyone's a possession. Mm. So he killed her, and then he was eventually caught. He was caught, yes. And he got convicted and went to jail. <sighs> Apparently, he passed away a month before going to trial. While in prison? Uh, so he got bail six months after mm. he was in prison. Mm. What's only bail? And then literally a month before going to trial, he passes away. Do we know how he died? Yeah. Um, he had, uh, I don't know what the condition is called, but it's apparently when Ikenza mixes with AIDS mm. and then it becomes a different condition. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, what's the skin cancer? Apparently. And then he died. And then he died. Mm. And how do you feel about that? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we are dealing with a person here who's literally capable of anything. Mm. Absolutely anything. The lengths that he went to shows that he's psychotic. Mm. So I wouldn't put it past him to fake his own death. But Mm. I mean... It is what it is. I'm telling the story now, so 
And do you feel safe sharing the story? I do. Mm. I do feel safe. Mm. Yeah, mm. I mm. do. I mean, you know what? It's it's fine. I I'm protected. I I'm, I'm a Christian, and I know I'm protected by Unkulunkul. All of this did not happen j mm. just mm. for the mm. fun of it. There are there, there was a reason behind all of this happening, and I'm using it mm. for good now. I'm going to ask a very speculative uh, question because. This is not something that's necessarily proven in the courts or anything. Of course. But do you think he took anybody else's life prior to, um, you know, your mom? I I got a... So after I went and I vented and started briefly telling my story on social media, I got a couple of inboxes um, of people sharing things that uh, alluding to that he had been part of shootings and and losses in their families mm. so based on the way that the the murder happened with my mom that doesn't look like a person who's doing it for the first time even mm. the way that he allegedly killed this girl mm. it's too I don't know. It's 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 too it's too personal. Like, for example, how 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 he killed how he killed this girl was apparently he strangled her, and then she went into a seizure, yeah. and then he didn't know what to do with himself. And apparently, this came from him. He confessed mm. this, mm. and then she went into a seizure, and then she, um, he went and he grabbed a blanket from the garage, came back, covered her head, and started smashing on her head. You know. That doesn't sound like something a person is doing for the first time. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to have gone through stages before you yeah. get to that. Looking back, how does it feel knowing that you were living with somebody? I mean, obviously, you've, you've obviously done the reading to get a better understanding of his personality type, where you were at in your life. But looking back at it and realizing, wow, I lived with somebody that did all these heinous things. How does that make you feel? <sighs> It's, I get goosebumps every time I think about it, especially because, like, I'm, I get scared now, even though it's, it's happened already, because mm. I'm realizing the amount of danger I was actually in. Um, I mean, at the time, I was on fight mode. Mm. I was on, there's no time to go sit in a corner and cry. And I, I didn't even have the time to mourn my mother because I was on a constant fight with this guy. I'm dodging bullets here. I'm fighting courts. I'm fighting cops that are telling me I need to deal with him and I need to deal with him and make sure it doesn't come back to me. It was a lot. It was mm. a lot. But I'm realizing, Wutsi, I'm actually powerful. Yeah. Do you feel like you are healed? Because from how you are speaking, um, mm. you are able to, you know, have this conversation with me without getting very emotional. E emotional or expressing that much emotion from what we can see. Um, I definitely think I've healed. I'm in a position, man, in my life where I'm like, okay, cool. Um, how can you use what you went through? to mm. help other people, to help other women, not just women, because you also have women that are abusive and are mm. narcissists. Just how, wh wh what change can you affect into society to make sure that Omunyumundu going through what I went through or similar to what I went through has it a little bit easier mm. and has some level of support? Because I really felt like I was alone at the time mm. because it's very hard I mean, this sounds like a movie. Mm. So if you are explaining this to a sane person, it sounds very far-fetched. Mm. So it's it's hard for a person to even start imagining or identifying how to help mm. you because it doesn't sound like a thing. It, it doesn't sounds sound too much. Yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah. too... Like, where do you start to help a person who's going through this? Yeah. So me having gone through it and having gone through the motions of what it actually feels like to go through it, I'm able to identify with people going through it and I've literally started taking taking steps in in how to go about helping other people in a similar situation. 
What final words would you like to to share with the viewers that are watching? <sighs> what final words? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I I think that it is important because one of the things that I'm doing, Manje, um, it's an NGO called mm. the Noctula Legacy that I started this year. So Noctula was my mother, right? And Noctula means mother of peace. So where I am right now in my life, I'm at a point where I did not create this NGO just to help women out of abusive situations and to advocate for women and to hold their hands when they go to courts and when they go to police stations and getting turned away because mm. go sort out your domestic issues. It's not just about that. There's already, you know, a few amazing NGOs doing that already. For me, it's also now about creating a platform that um, men can be vulnerable in. So mm. it's a two-part, so my agency is doing two things. So I'm creating platforms where men can be vulnerable, mm. where we are speaking to the boy child, where we are, you know, saying it's okay as a man mm. to be vulnerable. Because if we are being honest, this guy that did all these things to me, he did not wake up one morning and decide that, Yazin, I want to be a monster. Mm. Something happened in his past. Mm. So if we don't go to the root of the problem, we are not going to create a society that eventually is peaceful, which mm. is what I'm trying to do. So my last words I would say is, it's important for us to spread love to, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not trying to make excuses for abusive people. Mm. I'm not trying to be apologetic for them. But sometimes we need to go to the root of the problem instead of trying to fix the symptoms and going off at each other and in this male v mm. versus women battle mm. that's going on right now, especially on social media. We need to have the difficult conversations that we need to have mm. as to would see what is the root of the problem, whether it's patriarchy, what, whatever it is, mm. but it's a societal thing. We need to go to the root in order to be able to fix the problem and just spread love. Spread love. Thank you so much, Lucky, for coming to talk to us and for sharing such a painful, painful story. Thank I'm you. sure that many that are watching uh, are going to have light bulb moments and hopefully change whatever situations that they find themselves in. Thank you so much for having me. Hashtag unpacked with Rile Bukhile. I hope that those of you that are watching right now that are directly or even indirectly affected by gender-based violence or any of these types of situations that we've spoken about today can find yourself out, can find the light and can continue to spread the love. If you need the help, we'll put the details up on the screen at the end of the show. Do reach out where you find yourself alone because you are not alone. And we do hope that you can get yourself and climb out of that situation. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. I kept asking her, don't you want to see the baby? Don't you want to see the baby? And then she said, no, just take care of the baby. I mean, kids are kids. You never know from one mistake something could go wrong and then you don't know. The doctor's like, you could have brought her earlier. There's certain things you couldn't do, like you couldn't breastfeed. After that, she went to ICU and she didn't come out. so much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.